G'day friends, welcome to today's YouTube video. My name is James, welcome back to my channel. Welcome if you're new. Hopefully you are looking for a Hobonichi five year Tetra video that you want to watch me flip through and talk about at length <laughs> for no real good reason. No, I do have a good reason. Someone had asked me the other day if I could do kind of like a mid-year flip because I always do the yearly flips and I do one that's just music and then I do yeah, I think I just do music. I don't think I chat through the whole year. Goodness, it would take me a whole year to do it. Um, so I think I just do that. But yeah, it is interesting to kind of bring my thoughts about the Hobonichi five year and all that it is halfway through a year because, you know, we tend to ebb and flow with our uh, motivations and our discipline, don't we? And so halfway through the year, um, I'm actually all caught up. So it's it's really not going to be too much of a, a whinge session today. But I thought I would share with you what it's like to own one, what it's like to put one into your kind of routine, the daily habit of keeping a five year journal. Um, I'm not going to go at length on all of these things. I do have a little list. I basically just want to give you some of the pros and cons because if you're anything like me, when Hobonichi start releasing their preview for the next year, you get really excited and you want to buy everything and uh, you want to go and search for everyone who already owns those things to talk about them to see if that's something that you really want to spend your money on. So if you are thinking about saving your yenis for a five-year journal, I will just say this is one of my favorite journals of all time. If there's a house fire, this goes straight into my bag and I uh, take it with me. And that is, it, it actually pretty much is the only journal that I will, you know, run out of the house with. I'll run out with the cats as well and Steve, but <laughs> just this journal, I will put this in my bag. And there's a really good reason for that, and it comes to my first pro. I'm going to slowly flip it. You know, we're in August, so there's a lot to flip. Um, I'm going to slowly flip it. You know what? I'll tell you how I uh, store it all first. We'll, we'll get right from the beginning. This is the journal. It's A6, really cute. And I store it in this little tray, if you can believe. This is a box that I got from my Mino Peronin cover. I can't bear to throw it away because I'm a hoarder. And then this is the box that the cover came in. I got the cover in 2019. I got it from the Tobichi store in Kyoto. Came like that. And I used to store it in the actual box, the yellow box that the journal itself came in. But it was too, it was the, the journal was too big once the cover was on. So now I store it in this. And I do it like a travel suitcase. I just put patches and stickers all over it. And I love it. Absolutely love it. And it just makes a great little tray for me to store everything in. Um, at the bottom of the tray is this piece of paper that the journal comes with so that you can test your inks and see what will bleed. So that's always come in handy. Um, I actually don't care too much if it bleeds. I just go for it. <laughs> and then I have this Astro Boy pencil board in A6. And this is because I want to kind of cut back on how much uh, pressure I put into the page. I, I really write rough and hard and sometimes it looks like chicken scratch it's not even worth writing because you can't read it but um when i do <laughs> when i do put some effort into it i can do some nice small writing sometimes but this really helps because one of the biggest um i guess features of this is the fact that it does hold five years which means there are tons of pages and even having heavy-handed writing can put this slight, you know, debossing into the page that will make it just ever so slightly thicker than it was when you first started. And if all of these pages, hundreds of pages, start out really, really nice and compressed and really thin, and then over time you add stickers and washi tape and really heavy handwriting and some watercolor, they tend to get really chunky, uh, even with the slightest little crinkle in the page. So uh, it's kind of like one of those small problems that snowball into a much bigger problem. I've been conscientious, conscientious, conscious of that from the beginning. I did not want to bulk up this journal to the point where it was unusable, especially writing in it every day. Uh, you get really challenged by how much of a hump there is to write over. There is a way to avoid that and you can, it's very well bound, but I wouldn't recommend doing this often. If it's really, really tricky, like at the start of the year and the end of the year, you can take a chunk of the book and then fold it back on itself so that it levels out. Um, also, it doesn't really help to do that with the cover on there. Speaking of the cover, I do, I love the red, so glamorous, and it has the Hobonichi five-year on there. Um, it's Hobonichi branded, got this from Kyoto, but this is what the actual journal looks like. It's a brown leather, it looks very biblical, like a Catholic hymnal, hymn book, <laughs> or an encyclopedia. It looks like all of those things to me. And, oh, look at that. Is that, is that the, um, the aging, the patina? Maybe. I don't really have this out in the sun, so maybe that's just air kind of oxidizing the inside. I'm not quite sure. Um, there's a bit of wear and tear on this, but, you know, you're going to have this for five years, so get used to a bit of handling, I would say. 
But yeah, I keep it like this. Everything stays together and it has to be within arm's reach. Otherwise it is out of sight, out of mind, kind of like everything in the studio, really. If I, if I really like like a new set of pencils and I kind of put them on display a little bit, I won't reach for them. They're on display now. They're not usable pencils. <laughs> everything I need to use, especially if it's a part of a daily routine, like my planner and this Home Inchi five year, it has to be within arm's reach. Like it literally has to be at the side of my desk or on that little table next to me. So I keep this really close at all times, just in this little tray so that it's always ready to go. Now, I'm gonna slowly flip through it and talk about my pros and cons list. I will be all over the place because you know I love to chat and especially about journaling and especially about my favorite journals. So I started in 2019. Um, in the beginning, I didn't buy this because I had some big grand plan to be someone who chronicled my entire life. I was really getting into journaling and documenting specifically, like documenting my life. I've always loved kind of scrapbooking and, um, you know, taking photos and just making memories. And I actually have kind of a bad memory, so not for arguments. I'll remember every single word said in an argument, but <laughs> I just won't remember any good parts of my day um, that involve family and friends. So I do have to write that down so I can reminisce on it. And I love photos. This is actually something I do every time I go on holidays. I do these little strip collages of photos because it's just too many memories to write down. So, you know, if a picture speaks a thousand words, there's technically like 20,000 words in that passage. And, uh, you know, they're really tiny, but I know what they look like. <laughs> I'll have to get a magnifying glass and like stick it in the front, like a little monocle when I'm older so that I can really zoom in and see. Thankfully, the eyes are still working at this point. There's my little hoodie bell. Savannah, that's my niece. So the right hand pages are kind of blank when you get them uh, and you can just add your your artistic expression or your photos. Obviously I try not to add too many photos, like I said it'll bulk up really quickly, um, but I quickly, I mean I did throw that rule out the window once I was going on vacations because I really wanted to put them in, so I will mostly only do it for that and then other things. <laughs> my rules are never really of rules, um, but you know I think about it a little bit. But it is best just to draw if you can draw. And then on the left hand side, uh, you journal or you kind of document. You could of course do it both sides. People do this all kinds of different ways. There is no set rule. It all just depends on what you want the journal for. My specific reason was uh, very vain, very shallow. I actually just wanted to buy into Hobonichi as a brand. And back, I think it was in 2018, at the end of that year, I started with a Midori a5 notebook and I was doing weekly documentation like I would document my week uh you know the seven days in a week and I said well if I could do that then I could buy myself a Hobonichi uh like cousin or something and I would use that as like a, a documentation journal I would kind of document how my year was going but then I realized I didn't really need that because I was doing all kinds of different documentation. Like the, the Midori was working really well for that. I didn't need to go and buy something different just to have what I already had. And then I had a planner, so I didn't really need that. Although I did eventually change to Hobonichi. And then, and I'm still with them. I'm with the Hobonichi Weeks now for my planner. Um, but I really just wanted to buy into the brand. And I saw this and I thought, well, I don't have a five-year journal and maybe this would be a good habit to be in. Maybe this would be really interesting. And then I saw... Uh, I saw one of these ads and it was a Japanese man and he was, it was uh, all translated and he had said, uh, think back through the past five years and everything that's happened. And it was kind of like diving back into my memories to think of literally like how my family had changed and how my life had changed and all that. Like I was in a different career. I was living in a different country. Uh, family members had passed away, like tons of stuff. I got married, like tons and tons and tons of things had happened in the five years I was thinking about and I could not fathom not documenting the next five because once I had realized that you know there are all these special tiny moments that I just really don't remember as well or you know that I, I didn't document through photos that are all in one place that I can just go and grab and, and pour through I was kind of devastated a little bit I mean <laughs> it's the funniest marketing tactic where it was a bit of FOMO, it was really pulling on your emotional heartstrings, but you're actually more devastated by the end of it. Um, so you were buying it, I guess, mostly out of fear and devastation, which is very effective, I feel. Maybe I should employ some of that <laughs> channel be creative. <laughs> I know we got a whole FOMO thing going on here, but yeah, they really got me. Hobonichi got me, gal. So I bought the five year and then I started and I will admit, um, it's kind of first on my list for on the cons, it is a really difficult commitment. It's it's a really big challenge. 
Um, you know, I bought A6 because I thought it's tiny, so it won't be much just to fill this in. Now, I do journal to the size of the, the grid in it, and the grid is quite small. And I can write small, and it is legible when I want it to be, and so I found that, like, even writing this much, sometimes not that much happens in a day. So I would have to kind of find a way to either elaborate through my feelings about what happened in the day or kind of prompt myself with something else that happened. And then other times there was a lot that happened and I could fit it in the in the passage, but it did become a commitment. It, it does take me about five minutes, which I know doesn't sound like a lot, um, but it's a five minute practice at least just to get your day documented in here. And then if you fa fall behind a few days, that five minutes turns into 15 minutes. And it can very quickly become one of those things that you've realized you've lost three weeks in and it's going to take you hours to catch up and that is one of the things i notice about many many people who take on the five-year journal is that once they fall behind if there isn't a, a very specific effort made to catch up because most people don't want to leave huge gaps um, some people can do that and feel completely fine but what i have noticed about most people that have stopped it uh, that they're the type of people that don't want to have something unfinished and find themselves falling behind and then don't take the time to catch up. Um, it, it can be a big, like, it, you don't want to say stress because you don't want to think that something you're doing for fun and that is pleasurable can stress you out. But that is just the reality of it. Sometimes our expectations meet our realities and it just can be really difficult to, um, you know, <laughs> be happy about it when we've fallen behind. So there, it is a commitment. That is the first thing I'm going to say. And it really can be a good thing if you can manage to fit that into your routine, if you can build a habit around it. It's a very good uh, you know, kind of healthy habit, I think. It encourages you to write, it encourages you to romanticize your life, which is a big, uh, a big part of enjoying it, I think. Uh, not even just the journal, but your life in general, <laughs> when you're always looking for, you know, some kind of positive spin on it, or you're always looking for a, a, an interesting way to see your day. It is really hard. Like I said this about when I became an art journaler, it was really easy for me to sketch and draw and paint and do everything that I loved. But the writing for me, uh, was a little difficult. One, I tend to be really dramatic uh, when I write and overly emotional. <laughs> it's, it's a nice like purge from my heart. Uh, but two, it is really hard to write down things that you've kind of fabricated to yourself or you're kind of in denial about or you're kind of um, possibly even lying to yourself about. It's really hard to write that down and have it look right back up at you and kind of convict you in that moment. And so to form a habit of that, I feel like what I ended up doing was forming this daily check-in with myself, not just with, you know, what I was actually doing in the day, my activities, but how I was feeling about them and kind of always coming back to like, could I be honest about how I felt about it? What were the things that I was trying not to write in here because I didn't want to have to admit it? That's a really huge one for me. Um, and I will say that is only something I think of because I know... I put this on social media and so there are definitely things that I have edited out of my day. It's not to say that I don't document them or that I don't code them in here. There's a lot of code kind of <laughs> written in. <laughs> not anything fancy but definitely coded language that I would understand what that meant that is absolutely not meant to be decipherable by anyone watching. But you know I have a, I have a whole life right so every, not every day is going to be good not every day is going to be fun and, and fantastic and I do want to make sure that even that's in here and it can be really difficult to have to face that and to have to acknowledge that if if in your personality type or the person that you are is someone that would avoid that anyway. So I can say that it can be a great habit to build but it can also be a really challenging and possibly even a bit of a damaging habit to build if you're not in a space where you know, you're ready to get comfortable with who you are, what you're about, uh, what what's going on in your life, and how honest you want to be about it. <laughs> Those things can be really challenged, and, and you can be really tested, um, you know, with that kind of, uh, what do you want to say, like, it, with having it flashed back up into your face every day. Um, so that is one of the things that I also have in, in good, in my list of good things about it. I have noticed patterns of behavior within myself or just rhythms, the ebb and flow of life and even how I've made decisions in the past um, that I was totally unaware of until I started documenting it, until I started realizing I'd been writing the same passage over and over again or I'd been upset about the same thing over and over again but none of the other passages had I actually tried to work it out. I was just simply whinging about it 
again. And so, yeah, like I said, that can be very confronting. This is not meant to scare you. I'm going to talk about lots of good things too. <laughs> and honestly, I do see it as a good thing, but it can be, it can be weird. It can be a weird experience to have that because we think of journaling, well, I think of journaling when I first started as like, you know, fun, colourful, artistic endeavours. And even though that is majority of what I like to do anyway, there's a very real side of why I do this now that is very linked to uh, personal development and growth. And also... Uh, making sure that the life that I'm living is a life I want to be documenting and journaling about. Uh, it really, I mean, I've, I was mentioning this the other day about just even giving myself green stars for when I went to Zumba really affected how much I was motivated to go because I wanted to collect more green stars in my planner. <laughs> like, I don't know what it was. I just became very motivated by that. I would get a little irritated if I couldn't put them in there. So it, it formed a real life habit, this real life change kind of spawned from this desire to journal something in a certain way or to, you know, collect green stars in my journal. I could have just put them in there. I don't know why it had to mean something. <laughs> but anyway, so yeah, now we've got a lot of these serious out of the way. I mean, it's, it's, this is how I feel about it. I know it's probably hot and heavy, but I do appreciate uh, that some people, you know, some people like to hear this perspective. It is, uh, it's certainly not something I talk about often because I do like the lighter side of, of journaling and art, artistic expression, but this is really my life. Like this is at this point, four years of my human experience here on earth. And there are a lot of experiences and emotions weaved in and out of this that, you know, whenever I do share it, I'm usually only showing you pictures of it. I'm not usually speaking about it. So maybe this is the first time I've kind of done this. <laughs> Oh well, four years in, I, I, I guess I've learnt something, and I am happy to be sharing it, so let's uh, keep going. We are on good. Let's just do something really good and get it out of the way. This journal, specifically, is a wonderful celebration of life and milestones. Uh, for me, that's really important. I work by myself at home, and if I'm not celebrating something, it's not like, you know, the boss is going to throw me a, a party for completing a, a work day well or something. Oh, he was that day where I kept on getting upset and sick. See, I had a migraine that day and I had a James Can't Cope day. <laughs> but look, I broke the February 7th James Can't Cope day streak. Three years running, see? Uh, patterns of behaviour. Although I don't think a migraine is a behaviour, but for some reason February 7th were just always bad days for me. Until this year. Uh, that was just fun to note. But yeah, it's a really wonderful celebration of life, it, even in the smallest ways, like that little passage about, you know, February 7th, I kept having bad days, but having a good day this year, like that's just something I would never have known had I not been documenting it this way. And it did actually make me feel extra special February 7th this year, like I felt like I'd actually broken a curse or something. <laughs> Doesn't it sound crazy? It does, it changes how I feel about things, how I view things. Art journaling in general has done that for me. I mean, we can't leave a shop without getting a business card or a piece of ephemera from something. Um, so, you know, once once you get addicted to the art journaling, it really does start to alter your whole life. But for me, this is a really exciting uh, opportunity to, I guess, m like really focus on all of the really tiny details of the day that I would just forget. I don't have a great memory. I really just don't have a great memory unless I'm remembering every word you said to me in an argument. I will remember that for at least 25 years, but <laughs> I just, I won't remember the really special small things that really do make the difference. And when I flip through this, I mean, I, I'm getting so distracted already. There are a million memories in here. There's not even finished yet. Look at Oliver. This is when I got my little mini camera, which I got because I loved all the photos from here when Elijah got his mini camera for Christmas. I don't need to be talking about that. This is not a journal flip. I mean, it is, but it's not. <laughs> so another pro, uh, it's a great Hobonichi quality. Um, did I mention this, that I wanted to buy into the Hobonichi brand? This is my way to do it. It is great quality. Tomorrow River paper, you know, obviously there's a little ghosting, a little bleeding from time to time and a little bit of crinkling when you get watercolor on there, but nothing that will ruin your experience. And uh, it kind of has to be that thin tomorrow of a paper, which I don't know if they've changed it since I think that paper is no longer available for the journals. I'm not quite sure. I might have to uh, double check that before. I mean, I'm not buying that one next year, but if you do look into it, because I'm sure it's still thin, but it might not be tomorrow of a paper. That might just be an old thing of the past now. Uh, something 
else that can be difficult about it is it bulks up really easily. I mean, five years worth of documenting and handling, even if you've got uh, just a little bit of watercolor warping in there, if you've got some stickers, some photo stickers like I do, and some ephemera, some washi, uh, even if you press too hard with your pen, you can turn a thin piece of paper into a slightly thicker piece of paper, and over time, that just really snowballs into a big problem. So the bulk of that journal can be difficult. I feel like the, the A5 version might be easier to handle, um, because this is just so small and chunky. I feel like just because it's smaller, it feels chunkier. Obviously, if it's bigger, I feel like it's more the, the bulk is more spread out over a larger surface area. I'm not scientific, so I don't know if that's real, but <laughs> I'm saying it. <laughs> I'm just going to say it, but it does bulk up. Um, it can be expensive as well. Once you factor in how much the journal costs and then how much it costs to get shipped from Japan to wherever you live, uh, even if you're in Japan, I mean, being in Japan is the cheapest way to get it for sure, but it can be a little expensive. I think all said and done, by the time I got mine, it was over 50 US dollars, which can be expensive. But if you do break it down over five years, that's like $10 a year, which I would actually kind of consider pretty cheap. So it's all the way you see it, I think. But you do want to save your yenis for it if you are thinking of purchasing that. I'm not quite sure what the price is for next year, but uh, that was what it was when I bought it back in the day. And then I'm going to just get the bad out of the way, just so we can talk about good things for the rest. Um, it can be confronting, uh, especially for the patterns of behavior. I want to say that because I've, look, the thing I notice about people, the thing they don't like about the five-year journal is that it's a habit that they can't manage to, uh, like, adopt. They can't get it into their routine. They fall behind. They don't make the time to catch up. And they're just the type of people that don't like to have big, empty spaces in their journals. And so once you feel a little dejected about it, they stop. That's what I've seen. That's what I've seen is most common. I even don't think there's a problem with it. I mean, no one likes to feel like they've not completed something or failed at something or spent money on something and it hasn't been worth the investment. But, you know, stuff happens. It's just journaling at the end of the day. There's no reason you can't pick it back up again and figure out a way to fill in all that blank space. But it really will kind of highlight if if you are the type of person that is just unable to to complete something or to commit to something. If you lack discipline or motivation, if you're not the type of person to commit and, and see it through, this will highlight it like no other journal will. I mean, people do daily journaling in other types of journals, uh, specifically if it's undated, I feel like it's so much easier to get through because it's just inevitable. You're not gonna have every day an opportunity to do the type of journaling you wanna do, right? Some days you just miss it all together because you're just way too busy. Or some days you can just be in a mood that you just don't want to do it. And that's just normal. But it does take at least five minutes for me to put this passage in. So if I miss one day, that's five minutes plus the five minutes from that other day. And then I usually want to draw a little bit. So I only need to miss a week before I'm having to take over an hour to catch up, which then you're factoring in big chunks of time, right? So if you miss three weeks, you might be spreading the catch up time over a few days. And, you know, even as someone who does this as like a full time job, uh, not the hobo, but like all the journaling that I do, you know, it's obviously a part of my business. Um, it can be a lot for me. So I couldn't even imagine what it'd be like if this is just something you're throwing into your nightly routine. I do think, of course, it is possible. I'm living, breathing proof. And there are many others that it is possible, even with a hectic schedule, even with, uh, you know, commitment issues. I'm the first to say that I'm the most non-committal person on the planet. And even I have managed to commit to it, but that wasn't without an extreme amount of effort put forth on my part in the times where it just wasn't working out for me, where I was too busy, specifically around times where I'd be doing workshops or prepping them. This irritates me. The 29th of February, like the leap year problem, I, it irritates me so much because there's nothing else to put there. And it wasn't even a good day. Like, uh, what a nightmare. I did accounting. It was so boring. So I, I'm always just looking at how boring this is. I've got to put more stamping on there. Um, but yeah, so it will really, really highlight that. And I just want to let you know that because it's not something that I think a lot of people are going to share from. Because if you're, if you're the type of person to do that, it's obviously something you don't want to talk about, I think. But, you know, if you're not the type of person to do that, I don't think it crosses your mind. But I'm always looking out at my community. I'm always looking out at my peers. I'm always kind of noticing trends or like, um, you know, kind of 
what people succeed at, what people don't succeed at, especially as someone who teaches, I always want to make sure that like if there's a way where I can kind of encourage where I feel like people fall off a little bit, I want to take note of those things. And so a lot of people who I've seen do this and a lot of people who I've seen go the way of, you know, ditching it have expressed these sentiments that it was just too much to commit to or they really, really want to do but just couldn't, um, you know, for X, Y, and Z reasons. But most importantly, if you're just not the type of person to commit to something, like I even say I took a chance doing it because there was a, a good chance that I wasn't even going to finish the first year. <laughs> like I was fully expecting that, you know, I would drop off after a few months and I've been committed to it. Yeah, I mean, the, the longest I've spent not in it, I would say is maybe a few weeks and that was a difficult catch up. And, you know, I try not to be more than a few days behind now, but I can go about a week and then I'll sit down and kind of, you know, fix it all up. It's great if you've got an iPhone and you take lots of photos or if you post regularly to social media, you only have to go through your archives to really find out what you did in a day. So I don't keep notes anywhere, really. I just go through my phone and then remember what I did. Even on days where I can't think of what I did, I'll prompt myself into talking about something. I think most of 2020 and half of 2021 was how I felt about the pandemic. So <laughs> that's all documented in here. Oh, look, that was the day I found out that we were having, uh, it was closing at Disneyland. We were doing art journaling the magic and I got this alert on my phone. So I took a screenshot of it and thought, that's really interesting. What does that mean? If only I knew then. <laughs> so um, yeah, that was a lot, but... I love that look close to the public. I took so many screenshots because I was I've never seen any of these like public health announcements before. It's hard to believe. Oh look, there we go. No toilet paper. <laughs> I think that was common in most people's journals. I actually did. You know, that's to go back to saying like things that people might struggle with, or maybe a con. I don't see this as a con, but a lot of people said that they didn't want to journal the pandemic, um, and I can totally understand where people are coming from. Um, I'm not trying to sugarcoat my experience. Not that I think it's that, but like, I'm not trying to omit parts of my experience that, you know, I think would be good to look back on in the future, because ultimately I am considering that one day I'll look back on all of this and want to remember life as it was, right? I want to remember the time I had, who I was, what I was experiencing, how I grew. You know, this is supposed to document, you know, not only the things I did in the day, but who I was when I was doing them. So I want to know all of that. There's a lot of coded language for really heavy things that I just don't want people seeing on social media. I'm not unaware of the fact that I'm literally flipping through this for you page by page and you could read everything in here. You will never find anything salacious in here. You will never find anything that gives anything away other than some very generic things. But there's a lot of coded language that, that does allude to a lot of real life, like some of my more incredibly deep uh, personal emotional issues and things like that. Uh, but... I didn't shy away from stuff like the pandemic. I think it was important for me because it was such an incredible, you know, change in my life and in everybody's life, really. It kind of marked a very new chapter in the world as I experienced it. So I felt like that was important to keep checking in with myself on. And then I think over time, what you realize is this journal is not just to, you know, say, oh, I worked again today and I'm gonna work again tomorrow and I'll work again next week. <laughs> you get really used to kind of narrating your story and writing from your perspective about a life that you kind of take a step back from every day. And I really like that. I really like this idea of romanticizing my day a little bit, of finding, you know, ex beautiful expressive words to put to experiences that I have, of celebrating even like really tiny milestones and then celebrating really, really massive ones. I love to reread passages from years prior before I actually write, just to see if there's something that I can relate to or if there's something that's significantly changed over time. Uh, it is, it's just even odd to see that, like memory to memento. I remember putting that course together. We are years beyond that and so many workshops later, but I mean, I remember what that felt like to be in that corner of that room. <laughs> I was glued to that computer. Um, vaccines, like just celebrating everything, really. There's nothing I won't put in here except like really, really dark and heavy language. I will absolutely allude to it, but I'm not going to spell it all out for people. There's my Zumba class. 
So going back to some of the good, beautiful Hobonichi quality, it's a wonderful celebration of life. We've done with all the bad, so unless something else pops up, I think we're all good on that. Um, cap capture memories for life, all the small things you forget. Like I said, I'm not great with a memory, and I can only imagine that over time it might get a little bit worse. So <laughs> I am really, really happy to look back at all of this. There might be a day where I can't even make sense of it, and I, I might think that all the fairies and mermaids in here are real, but I mean, they'll always be real to me. But it will be nice to look back on memories. And I also haven't, like, shied away. I mean, this was from 2011. I haven't shied away from bringing back parts of before I documented my five-year. Obviously, I started in 2019, but I had a whole life before that, believe it or not. <laughs> and a lot of what I feel, or what I have been feeling, I mean, plot twist, I am going back to dancing. So most of, most of some of my heaviest feelings in here were about dancing and what my life was like before I, you know, before my accident and then after my accident, dealing with PTSD, how I felt about the career change and how I felt about the desire that I still had to perform. And, you know, now that I'm in this new chapter of my life, it's been so crazy to kind of read back on some of the things that, you know, I'm so happy, like they're so sad to reread, but I'm so happy that I'm not in that place. <laughs> <laughs> I just get giddy at the fact that, like, that's a sad old me that used to, that he lives in the past now. I'm not him anymore. Um, but that can be a really, really wonderful thing. Perspective, you know, perspective that every day or every other day, however late behind I am, um, I get to check in with where I'm at, how I'm doing and how I'm doing comparatively to me from before. It's I'm not comparing like this is nobody else's notes in here. This is not, you know, someone from... Sorry about that jump cut. I just ran out of storage on my phone. I guess that's a sign that I need to wrap this all up pretty quickly. <laughs> we might not get all the way to August, but um, it's okay. There's still a lot to look at. Oh, look, I found this little star. Well, it fell onto my page, so I glued it in. I love, I love, I mean, I turn the page. If there's something shiny, I'm going to stop. I'm going to chat about it. I'm going to talk about it. I'm going to stay there. Uh, look, this is the first time I did my little photo strips for when Stella and I went to Japan. I need to find some more of that Chiltern Wove matte photo paper. That's the best uh, matte sticker paper I've ever found. Super great. Look at these cute little stickers. Okay, um, next. Oh yeah, all the small things you forget. And what I was saying was that I'm not comparing myself to, you know, the person on Instagram that I follow who I'm really inspired by and I don't have to look at, you know, where I'm at versus where they're at. Because I think that can be, you know, something that we're all kind of tempted by, right? Sometimes just to compare ourselves to everything we see on social media, everyone's highlight reels, mine included. I absolutely use the filters and I set up my desk really nice. You never see what's on the perimeter of my desk when I take my photo. <laughs> it's just a mess. There's a cat, there's like three Coke cans over there. Um, anyway, but yeah, you do get to compare, you know, where you're at right now to where you were. Like I said, if you're the type of person that finds that very confronting, um, you know, not to call you out, but like just to be realistic, it can be very eye-opening for you to see some of the patterns of behavior flash up before your eyes and to have to acknowledge it. I mean, the, the journal's not gonna make you deal with it, but it is going to reveal it. So I would, uh, you know, I would just keep that in mind. If that's, if you're not there, <laughs> Don't worry about the journal. <laughs> just, just, just leave the journal for now, um, because there were definitely things that I I saw about myself that even you know think I I consider myself to be a very you know rational thinking person and and very able to accept you know like who I am and what I'm about. But there were certain things that I would look at and I would think you know perhaps that requires addressing. Like I should not be. I should not be feeling like that, or writing like that, or thinking like that. Um, but you know, I do a lot of stream of consciousness art journaling now, and that's really interesting too, because a lot of the feelings that I would write about, I've realized since then, are actually just really fleeting thoughts that are somewhere in my subconscious, but I don't actually believe half those things. But a lot of what I used to write down were feelings that I felt that weren't necessarily true, or that if I just looked at them from a different perspective, they were actually not as bad as I thought. So things like that, like real life advice, I feel like I've been able to glean from this experience. If you go to a therapist, they're going to tell you, right, you know, journal these things out, write your feelings out, write your thoughts out, because it is a very good way to process them all. Um, and having a daily habit, it can only be a good thing unless you're in a place where you know that's just going to be a bit difficult for you. So I, I just don't want to recommend you 
you jump into that because you like I said in the bad I don't know if I really mentioned it but if you're if you're already in that place and then you're also the type of person to feel bad about like starting something and not finishing it or you feel like you spend money on things and you feel guilty because you don't use them like and then you you give up on it like you're just asking for a problem not asking for it but you're kind of setting yourself up right and I don't want anyone to set themselves up so it's just good to know this is a big commitment totally worth it if you can do it just everyone falls behind a little bit it's okay make that time to catch up a little bit or make peace with the gap figure out a way to address it if you need to if you're the type of person that can just leave it please share us your secrets <laughs> i know i can't <laughs> um in other journals i can but for this specifically i have a very uh very real expectation it's not a huge expectation but i do want to finish it oh olivia newton john rest in peace oh, i love xanadu um anyway so yeah that just to reiterate that point because apparently i can't reiterate it enough uh, it can improve your ability to write and draw, obviously, any kind of daily habit, daily practice of anything, or uh, bi-weekly practice, or monthly practice, <laughs> depending on how far behind you are, can be good. It can only be good, right? So it can help you with that. I wouldn't say it's going to help you much uh, if you're an art journaler, because it's more likely that you'd be doing lots of uh, kind of artistic endeavors in those art journals rather than in here but it can also be a fun challenge in formatting or in scale if you're someone that doesn't draw really small and you're in an a6 it can kind of challenge you that way a lot of the stamp sets that i make i make a smaller version so that i can fit them in here this is my concepts 2 stamp set i think it's the 4 by 6 size i do love to use photos again from time to time you know i shouldn't because it bulks it up but i think i'm i'm fine <laughs> Sometimes I practice my lettering as well. If there's a day where not much happened, I'll use it as a chance to practice some lettering. I have done some challenges in here. I think I did an Inktober in here. Uh, just some little doodles in the corner. Such a glam shot. That was after Zumba. Look at that. I completely forgot I had long hair for a second. Um, and then the last thing I said down here was romanticize your life and patterns of behavior. Patterns of behavior goes into both, right? It can be a bad thing for some people. It can be a great thing for others. I think it's a great thing for me because... Uh, it just highlighted things that I felt like I could improve about myself and that I wanted to. The little mermaids. Um, and then it can also be a bad thing for, like I said, the other reasons. If you're not ready to deal with that kind of stuff, it can be a little confronting. Uh, but romanticize your life. There really is no better way to do that than to essentially chronicle it, uh, you know, through your own perspective and find ways to express how you feel about it. It doesn't always have to be nice and good. Um, you know, things like this, I, these are, this is a beautiful photo of my little sister and her baby, Elijah. He's a big boy now, I can't believe it. Um, that's me looking at him. Steve actually took this photo when he came to Australia back in 2015. This is just after my accident. Um, I just love it. I just, I knew her when she was that little baby. <laughs> it's just so sweet. I get really emotional looking at half this stuff because it's, it's just so personal. It's family and friends and... If I had all the time in the world, I'd love to think that I'd finish all of my pages like this, but it's just so unrealistic for me. There are some, um, there's one lady I follow on Instagram, she's a Japanese lady. The Instagram is uh, penry15, is it maybe? P-N-R-I? I don't even know if it's 15. Maybe it's just penry. I have no idea. Um, but she does five-year journal. I think if you just search for her Benichi five-year journal hashtag, she's probably like one of the top ones. Uh, she's very popular and for good reason. She's very talented and she does lots of illustrations uh, about the baby that she had and like all the baby's milestones and everything. And she kind of draws her life, which is really cute. Um, I admire that a lot. And I would probably, you know, in another life where I did something completely different and journaling was just one of those things I did for 15 minutes at night and nothing else, uh, like to think that maybe I would do the same, but I have all the other journals to draw in, don't I? definitely don't need to set that challenge for myself. I consider it from time to time. I think, you know, I could do it. I could. I could just try and prove to myself that I could do it, but it's okay. This is all working for me. And uh, yeah, cutting off my hair, big milestone. See you later, hair. I don't really know what else to say. I mean, I'm getting bolder. I really want to make sure that every one of my right hand side pages has artwork on it or memories and stuff in there before next year is over because that will be the end of this journal. I will absolutely buy another one. I've considered going up to A5 just to try something different because 
it's not like I need to. I mean, I literally get something that works and then I will change everything. Uh, but I would do A6 purely for the aesthetic of lining them all up. I did have an existential crisis the other day because I thought, well, five years, how many of these will I do before I die? Um, don't think about that. It's only going to ruin your day. <laughs> it was absolutely shocking uh, that I ended up down that uh, train of thought, but I thought I'd share that with you. Why not? <laughs> <laughs> just to traumatize you before you leave the video. I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to. I will keep going. Look, this, I've documented my outfit. Uh, I, I wore this in Paris. I love this. This is my loot. This is a stamp set as well. This was the uh, Stephen James stamp set. Again, selfishly, I size all these stamp sets to uh, suit my journaling needs, and a lot of them are for this A6 journal. Really, really love it. Some uh, good memories in here. There's my gram. Yeah, so I don't really have much else to share. Oh look, we're at uh, Paris and London, so we must be getting close. That was June. That was months ago already. I was going to say, we must be getting close. I must have uh, really blocked out July. What happened in July? My birthday. Why did I block that out? I love my birthday. <laughs> I get most uh, excited to look through this, obviously for the memories, um, but I will flip through any journal and kind of feel very nostalgic because I also remember making it. I remember a lot of the fun times I had journaling it and finding clever little ways to format something or using new art supplies that I was really excited to use or, um, you know, learning a new skill and being able to practice that, getting a new stamp set and the excitement of exploring what that looks like. Uh, the process itself has been really fun. On all the days it was fun. Sometimes it was a little, it was, it was a little bit of work some days. <laughs> but for the most part it was fun. And... Um, more than anything, I'm just such, like, as I grow older, I become really sentimental for, like, family and friends, and to see my family in here, and to see, like, just moments of life, I just get so, like, the heartstrings, I just, they just get tug of war. I'm all out of words. <laughs> I think I'm all out of words for this video, um, but you know what I mean. It's just, it really gets to me and I just love it. Look at these virtual voyage photos. This was the first virtual voyage we did uh, down the rabbit hole. And we did these photos. Um, we did the, one of them in our living room. We didn't do these ones there. That's in the in studio now. Goodness, that lighting is so harsh. And then we did, this was virtual voyage four. We're just about to start seven next week. I'm very excited about that. Yeah, so you can see, like, this is that middle of the year, the ebb and the flow, the right-hand pages start to look a little bit empty, I start to get a little bit more bold with the photos so I don't have to put much on there. <laughs> oh, look at that, Memory to Memento. We did that in um, Playtest Patreon as well. I'm going to bring back Playtest Patreon. There it is, there's the King Triton and Steve on the shoulder. So funny. So this is now also chronicling... Steve's journey through photography, because <laughs> that was kind of at the start. This is really recent, Art Journaling the Magic. Oh, that was so funny. He did such a good job with that wig. Loved that. Avant Garden. And all the uh, inspiration that we pulled from that, the Christian Dior, uh, we ended up seeing at the exhibit in Paris. So some days I actually do just carry on with something. I started this back in 2019, the next year I did this, next year I did this, and then this year I actually just decided to finish the whole thing so that if for whatever reason next year I didn't have those markers, it would be all complete. But yeah, I am very, very excited. Look at all my green Zumba stars. To keep going, I do this for my birthday every year. On the 26th, the, the day before, I kind of wrap up uh, what that year was for me and uh, kind of just summarize it and then talk about my birthday on the actual day. I have uh, some more portraits I want to add to this as well. I think I missed a day. We're getting up to August now. I will get to current day and then, oh there's a little drawing. And this was all in last week's video as well if you want to go and see some of those. I did a whole week of uh, journaling and I obviously had my five year in there. I'll get to that where we are currently. Today is Wednesday. I'll be getting this edited to you and put up for Friday because I'll be out of town for a little bit. 
Here we are. Oh, look, all pink. There's Savannah. She's over a year old now. She doesn't look anything like that. <laughs> yeah, it chronicles them as well. My nieces and nephews. I just love it. It's amazing. It's the perfect journal for me. Uh, you know, I, all these years in, I still struggle to keep on top of it. So it's just something that you've got to commit to, that you've got to want to see through to the end. Uh, you know, there will be a challenge for absolutely everyone, no matter how disciplined you are, no matter how motivated you are. You will always, at, at least one point throughout the five years, get to a space where you feel like it's overwhelming. But please let me be your biggest cheerleader and encourage you to push through that uh, little trouble spot so that you will have something super exciting to show for at the end of it. I just want, I want you to flip through this and feel the way I feel when I flip through mine. That's all I want. Is that too hard? Is that too much to ask? <laughs> so I'm going to push you. I'm going to push you to do it if you want to do it. And I'm going to encourage you with all the wisdom I've learned throughout the years. Hopefully it works for you. Um, if not, thanks so much just for watching the video anyway and indulging me with some more journal chat. I think I said I keep this short, but about, what, 45 minutes in? Here I am. I've got to edit it. I've got to go. Thanks for spending some time with me. Uh, good luck on your quest to figure out whether Hobonichi 5 Year is good for you. If you do get it, please tag me in your work uh, on Instagram especially. I love to see everyone's work, especially 5 Year journals. I, I love to be... Uh, a pusher at the five-year journal <laughs> until then uh, i'll see you next week have a great day goodbye